Hey everyone, so in today's video I have a ton of cream blushes to declutter with you all. So we are doing speed reviews of every single cream blush formula that I have. I'm going to give you an overview of my entire collection and then also I think it's time for a bit of a declutter. It is the spring and it is time to do a bit of spring cleaning. So that's what I'm doing today. I hope you all enjoy it. If you do, definitely make sure you're subscribed because I have a lot of declutter videos upcoming on my channel. I'll leave all the products I talk about today uh, down below as well. So just jumping into it, I have a bunch of liquid blushes here, cream blushes here. You all wanted to see a combined video. So I'm always listening and that's what we're gonna do. You know what, let's first start off here with Charlotte Tilbury. So, so Charlotte Tilbury actually came out with their Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush wands, I believe early last year. These essentially are Charlotte Tilbury's newer um, matte version of the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand, which if you guys are familiar with this product, there are a few different shades, but this one in particular is the shade Pinkgasm, and it is essentially their more blushy shade. This kind of went viral, so I think it makes sense why they decided to expand a little bit here. Now, Pinkgasm is very pretty. I think if you are a fan of a luminous blush, like you enjoy a pearl to your blush, I find this one to be very pretty. Now, what you'll come to find in this video is that I'm very picky with the kinds of luminosity that are within my blush. If I get luminosity, but my skin overall looks more textured, I would honestly just rather not. I'd rather not go down that road. But this one, I don't have to choose. It blends really beautifully, so I am going to be keeping this one. It is a very beautiful one. However, that being said, I like this formula even more. These matte blushes from Charlotte Tilbury are absolutely beautiful. So my favorite shade is this shade Pillow Talk. It is, let me squeeze out a little bit for you guys. It's so pretty. The reason I really like it is it's just a little bit of like a mauvey brown. I like that it's not too too purple i think the way they balanced it um just makes it a very easy blush to wear really any day any kind of look blend out so so seamlessly now now these are matte in the sense that they don't have any shimmer to them but i don't think that the finish is necessarily matte i consider this to be more of a natural finish and then i also have the shade pink pop now Pink Pop, I really was not expecting um, much from this shade, honestly, but it's really beautiful. For me, I consider this to be more of a peachy pink rather than like a bubblegum kind of pink, which I know everyone loves bubblegum pink. Uh, it feels like, or like kind of like a candy Barbie pink, but I think that this one is going to get along with more people, this kind of pink. Just that little bit of warmth, I think, is really pretty. But anyway, you guys, this is an expensive formula. That's definitely true. They do perform, and that's why I really enjoy them. I am going to be uh, keeping both of them. I really love both. But I also have this uh, backup of the Pillow Talk shade. Now, if this was a backup in the Pink Pop, then I would probably declutter it and give it to someone else. But because this is my favorite shade and I use that blush all the time. I think for now I'm gonna keep it. We'll see like how quickly I go through the other one. Let's see, next up we have this uh, Bosma blush. Now, what are these called? They're the cream, <laughs> just called the cream blushes. Now, first of all, I don't like this packaging because I find that sometimes I'm like struggling to find which um, angle to open it. And also, it just doesn't, I don't know, the packaging just doesn't feel as satisfying as I would like. However, all of that aside, because at the end of the day, who there's only so much I care about with packaging. I can get it open functionally. Um, but here's the thing. For me, formula is number one. I really, really like this formula. 
The shade is really pretty. It applies very evenly. And I find that I'm able to build it up if I want to, but sheer it out as well. I also find that it lasts really well on the skin. I just think it's really easy to work with and I found their foundation stick to be the same way. Easy to work with makeup always uh, gets my stamp of approval, I find, or it's way more likely to get my stamp of approval. Overly dewy, it's not overly matte. So in general, I just find it to be like a very stable cream blush. Is it like the sexiest, fanciest formula out there? No, but again, it is very dependable. So I'm going to keep that one. Next up we have the Seal Blush and Protect. Now this shade is the shade Christy. I'm pretty sure this is a fan favorite shade for a lot of folks. Um, I really, I really, really like this blush. It is actually quite pigmented. So if you enjoy that, I think there's a good chance that you'll like this blush. It just has a really seamless effect. It's quite dewy on the skin, so you have to like a little bit more of a dewy flush. It's not like greasy though, um, obviously, but this kind of shade, this kind of warm nude shade, I think is really good if you don't want to fuss with a blush and a bronzer, if you have um, something similar to my skin tone. This is kind of just gonna be a quick everyday flush. You can put it on the cheekbones, put it on the forehead, and it is just that blush to make everything look seamless. If you have more of a neutral to warm makeup look, like this is always gonna kinda go with it. So I think also focusing on blush shades that you see yourself using a lot is a good thing. Um, this one is very good. It also has SPF 30, so I would never rely on this for my SPF, you guys know that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with adding a little extra SPF into our makeup items, as long as, again, we're not like relying on them. I actually have a couple more shades in the mail coming and I'm trying out their bronzer stick. So you'll probably see that in my cream bronzer declutter that's coming up soon. Next up, I have this little K-Beauty Can Make Cream Blush. Now I used to have so many of these. And by the way, I do have a K-Beauty haul coming incredibly soon. So make sure you're tuned in for that video if you like K-Beauty, but the Can Make Cream Blushes, this is the shade CL01. It's important because they do have a couple of different red shades. I'm pretty sure there's like a strawberry red. And this is more of like a true red in my opinion. Like, look at that. It's really difficult to find shades like this. More brands are doing it, but this was one of the first that I tried years ago when I was getting into cream blush. What I find really pretty about it is the texture. The texture is kind of insane, kind of difficult to even describe. It's like a gel cream. It feels so much more like, I don't know, like a balm, but it doesn't go on in a sticky way, which is awesome. They've really managed to create a, a very interesting formula. By the way though, just to be clear, this isn't necessarily K-Beauty. Can Make is a Japanese brand, so it's J-Beauty. I'm going to be keeping it. It is affordable. It's really nice. I will say though that it does have more silicone in it. So occasionally it just won't get along with my skin. You'll find in this video that really silicone heavy formulas do do that for me sometimes. But using this kind of like on the tippy tops of my cheekbones, on the bridge of the nose, that's how I love using red blush. And honestly, I feel like my makeup is missing sometimes when I'm not even using a little bit of a red blush sometimes. I've gotten like so used to looking at myself with that. But anyway, um, I would love to do a video on red blush. Would you guys like to see that? I'm gonna be asking you a lot of questions in today's video, so don't be afraid to leave me a comment, give me some feedback. But anyway, this is one that uh, has really stuck with me and I really enjoy it. Incredibly affordable, so keeping this one. All right, guys, this is the Hard Candy Selfie, like pH blush. You can see it's like a blush oil. I'm pretty sure that they made this to ultimately dupe the one from Euphoria. I picked this up um, just to see like if I would even like a product like this. We'll give it a second. You guys can see how it changes. 
I mean, you gotta admit that is kind of, it is kind of satisfying. But this is just not something that I see myself really using. The texture is very like oily. There isn't like a slip to it. But if there's anything that I know about myself is that like, I'm just not going to reach for this. And I just gotta be real with myself on that level today to actually make somewhat of a declutter considering this is like one of my favorite makeup categories, clearly. That's the first decluttered blush we have today. Next, let's talk about the Merit Blush Balms. Now, these are my two absolute favorite shades from the line. This shade, Rouge, which, I mean, it's a red blush. This is one that I've been reaching for a lot. They just uh, recently released it. I really like about this formula, and by the way, you can see this red has like a little bit of a strawberry note to it, which I think will make it, I don't know, I, I think that that does make it a little bit more wearable for folks that are afraid of a more red blush. Because here, you can see when you go to blend it out, how it creates that just soft strawberry effect. That but hopefully you can also see the Merit Flush Balms are, again, they go on balmy. It is a more emollient formula, but there's also this pretty translucence to them. And they do eventually kind of dry down in a slightly more staining kind of way. There is kind of a fresh glow to them though. There, it's not like a flat kind of matte formula. And this is the shade Fox. So if you love these more toasty shades, this is going to be a really good match for you. Definitely one of those shades, again, that I can see wearing kind of all over the face as um, a blush bronzer hybrid. I really enjoy blush shades like this. And honestly, I love bronzer shades that kind of do the same thing. So those are the two shades that I have. I really enjoy both of them, so I will be keeping both. The blush that will be going is the Halo Glow Beauty uh, Wand from e.l.f. This is the shade Rosé Usleigh. Their e.l.f. actually has their luminous putty blushes that if you want a luminous effect, I would highly recommend checking those out over picking this up or even their liquid blushes, which I can talk about those in a second. In actuality, you guys, this just does not look flattering on the skin. It just doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure I even uh, saved this as like, I don't know, like a bad, uh, not good, hyped up kind of item. Would you guys maybe be interested in like a quote unquote bad dupes video? I've definitely talked about this in some of my save or splurge videos, but sometimes it's nice to have a video of all quote unquote bad products, which I'm just more so saying that as like a title idea. I don't think it's as black and white as good or bad products, but that could be a cool video idea. Um, I'm gonna for now keep this in the declutter bin, but you guys let me know. I want to make sure that I'm always like checking in with you all on what you actually would love to see because I have so many ideas spinning in my head like every single day and it's really nice to be able to pare down and really zero into what feels interesting for both of us. So again, let's talk about those e.l.f. blushes. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six different shades here. The first thing that you need to know is that I try a lot of makeup, um, I try, a lot of affordable makeup too. And part of the reason I end up leaning sometimes towards high-end makeup is just the performance of the product overall. I like to find formulas that work well, you know, whatever the price point is. And I want to only recommend the best of the best because I think that there are a decent amount of you that would rather save up for a really excellent product rather than buy three affordable products but never really be completely happy with the formula. At least this is how I think of it. What I'm trying to say is when I recommend affordable makeup, it's not because it's affordable, it's because I love the formula. This blush from e.l.f. 
these blushes are absolutely excellent. I absolutely love the formula. So let's give you guys some swatches here. I do want to declutter a couple just because I, I have a lot of them. This is the shade Peach Perfect, very warm, soft nude shade. I have the shade Coral Crush, which I'm pretty sure when I was buying them, I was like, Amanda, don't get the coral shade. You have too many coral blushes. <laughs> and then I did anyway. And I was very happy that I did, not gonna lie. There, what's really nice about this coral shade is there's a little bit of this um, kind of neonness <laughs> to the coral blush, which I find in the summer just looks so, so pretty. Really, really happy with Coral Crush. Uh, next up we have, this is the shade Pinky Promise. You can see the doe foot applicators are a little bit more rounded. So nice for like kind of dotting on the face if that's what you'd like to do. That's the shade Pinky Promise. I don't use this shade a ton because I almost, I usually find myself reaching for this shade, which is Dusty Rose instead. It's very, very pretty. I find it to just be kind of a similar shade to like Christy from Seal. It's just adding some really pretty warmth. Really, really nice. Next up, we have a shade which is very incredible. And by the way, I'm not sure how clear it is on camera. I noticed it in person and was a little bit afraid, but when you look really up close at the components, the formulas look like they have these little shimmers in them. You don't get that once they're on the skin. So I was really worried about that because again, I'm just very cognizant of shimmer in products. I don't want it to highlight the texture that I have on my skin, but these do not do that. If anything, they kind of like smooth out the look of the skin. So again, this is the shade Bronze Bombshell. It's beautiful. Um, I really love shades like this. I, I know they might look a little bit intimidating to some people if you're very fair like I am. However, this is a perfect like mix of a blush and a bronzer shade for me. Gives you a really, really cool out in the sun effect and I think that more people should be into these kind of shades. Every brand does their version of this a little bit differently. And I also really like that. It's just fun for me to try these blush bronzer hybrid shades. They've always been something that I really liked. Now we also have this shade, the last one, which is coming in hot pink. I don't like this shade very much. Um, not because the shade itself isn't pretty, but I need so little with this, um, like here. This is just one dot. You see how bright that is? Like how so little goes like such a long way. It's this very pretty um, raspberry shade. I would imagine this looking absolutely beautiful on a deeper skin tone as well. That is what is nice about some of these shades. Just the intensity makes them actually usable for more people. So here are all of the shades that I have. Again, they're, they're so pretty, but I don't need all of them. So here's what I'm gonna do. I know I'm going to keep this coral shade. The coral, the coral is staying. Definitely keeping the bronzed beach, or what is it called? Bronzed babe, <laughs> bronzed bombshell shade. I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter uh, peach, no, which one is it? Yeah, I'm going to declutter Peach Perfect um, because I just, I don't reach for it a lot. If you like a beigey kind of blush, I think that this shade would be really pretty, but I personally just don't see myself using it. So that one is going to go. I am going to keep Dusty Rose, which is right there. Um, I really, really like that shade and it's very pretty for every day. I'm going to keep the shade uh, Pinky Promise, which is right there. Just... Honestly, you guys, that shade is very, very pretty for summery looks. Like, imagine mixing these two together as I do it. You don't have to imagine it. Look at that. Is that shade not so pretty? God, it almost like, it almost reminds me of like Trix yogurt. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just kind of a delicious shade. So certainly keeping that one, but 
I am going to go ahead and declutter uh, coming in hot pink um, because I don't reach for it a lot. Next up, we have this little blush. It's the Ceramide Multi Balm from Iris and uh, Romeo. So this is a brand that I just, I quite honestly need to try more of their items. I have a couple kind of rolling around. This is the shade Rosy Glow. And I feel like I'm never giving them like a full shot. Like I'd really like to just actually sit down with the products and give them a go. I have found particularly interesting and something I've noticed is that the brand's formulas do feel reminiscent of some formulas I've tried from uh, Jones Road. So for example, this balm feels like a very similar kind of texture and even honestly a similar scent to the one from Jones Road. And they also have um, their best skin day ever, I believe it's called. It's like a cream foundation. And that product feels pretty similar to the What the Foundation from Jones Road. So I think I should probably dive into it. What way am I going? There we go. So I am keeping this for now just so I can, you know, again, keep trying some new brands. Maybe I'll do a little comparison of the two similar formulas that I've been sniffing out. Now, the Maneater blush from Tarte, um, a lot of people have compared this to the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. Uh, this is the shade Peachy Pink from Tarte. It's beautiful. I love this. It's more of a gel kind of texture, whereas I think the one from Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit more liquidy. This just, to me, feels a little bit more gel-like. It's so pretty though, beautiful, even application on the cheeks. It gives a very dewy effect. So if you are someone that wants a similar look to the one from Charlotte Tilbury, but wants something with even less like luminosity as far as pearl, I would go with this one. The sheen that you're getting, it's partially from pearl, but it's also because of like the finish as a whole. And it's, it's damn pretty. I think Tarte did a really good job with this. I know that they have some other like liquid blushers that they've come out with. They've really been coming out with like back to back to back releases it feels like. But I think pausing and looking at the line, this formula, there's nothing wrong with it. And in, in fact, it's very good. So next we have the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in Self uh, Love. I wish that I had picked up another shade because I'm finding myself just not really reaching for this. I think that it's just a little bit too raspberry, just a little more than I was expecting at least. It is a nice formula and I'm actually really excited to try their cream blush sticks. They just came out with like a luminous version of these. So, you know, let me know if you'd like me to try that out. If you would, I will. If no one says anything, then I don't know if I will, honestly, but I think this one does need to get a little bit more love on my channel though. So maybe I'll just pick up the new formula or another shade of this. If there's a shade you really like, definitely let me know. Now I have a couple of Juicy Pain blushers from um, a Pew, which is a K-beauty brand. Um, I have the shade Zero R01, which is, I love like the nail polish applicator. I think it's kind of silly, but see how much I'm putting on? Like you're like, damn, that's a lot, but watch. It like really shears out. Like there's a, a lot of translucence to them, which I think you'll either enjoy that or you won't. In the past, I've wished for them to be more pigmented. But for a really, really natural blushing look, I think that um, it makes sense why they toned down the pigment of these. And I will also say that I would rather it offer this kind of juiciness to the skin with light pigmentation rather than it be light pigmentation and be more of a matte finish because those liquid blushes really tend to underwhelm me. Now, this shade is the shade... R02. And I was just hoping that this was going to be a little bit more intense versus 01. So there's the shade. Very, very pretty. And you can see as far as the pigmentation, 
just a little bit more. You're, you're getting just a touch more. It's not necessarily because the formula is different, just the shade, just the shade is gonna look a little bit brighter on the skin. Both have that bit of a translucence, so these aren't for folks that want something similar to like, you know, the Rare Beauty uh, liquid blushes. I think I am going to go ahead and keep the shade RO2, this shade because, the darker shade, because I think I'll actually use it more. I picked this up like last year and I barely even have gotten to use it. I mean, it's still in its box. So I'll go ahead and keep this one, but I think um, I'm going to declutter R01, which is like this very faint kind of peachy shade. So pretty though. I think I'm going to declutter the shade Work from Milk Makeup. This is their old, big old packaging. If you know, you know. <laughs> I feel like Milk Makeup can't really escape it. No one has let them. Like we'll talk about these in a few minutes. The cooling water jelly tint from Milk Makeup. You can see the the size difference there. You, they used to give you a full ounce of cheek product, which listen, who was gonna use a full ounce of cheek product? Not many people. Um, though I will say my sister did go through their entire bronzer stick, I'm pretty sure. So maybe some people will <laughs> anyway. The shade Work, I think this is really pretty. I just don't, I don't reach for it. Honestly, there's like not a thing wrong with it. The smell has kind of changed a little bit. So it might be time for this to go. However, I'd be open to picking up some of their newer shades because the newer shades look really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this one. Honestly, it kind of feels wrong for me too, just because that was one of the first like cream blush formulas and cream bronzer formulas that I tried. It just feels like, damn, you know, time is moving. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I also have the cooling water jelly tint from Milk Makeup. Here it is in all of its jelly glory. It definitely is like the cranberry sauce that Thanksgiving kind of vibe. And this is the shade Chill. I'm not gonna give you like a full swatch on my hand because then my entire hand will be stained, but I will give you guys that. I think that it's a fun product. It's not like the easiest stain in the world to work with just because of the texture. You know, there's a reason why a lot of stains rely on liquid. It is to make them easier to spread onto the skin. Here's what it looks like when I've wiped it all off. Like you can see it definitely leaves a good stain. But as a whole, I do like this. Like it does last well on the skin. There's something really nice and lightweight and airy um, about it. Just, it, it doesn't feel like anything really. This is something that you wanna try. I wouldn't knock you for it. I tried it, I think it's nice. If you work with very thin foundation textures, very thin concealers, this is going to work well in your routine because you're dealing with a lot of thin textures. But if you like emollients, you like creaminess, this is not going to work. You need to kind of pair your products with similar formulas and um, textures. And this needs, in my opinion, to be paired with other thin formulas or else it'll kind of be very stark on the skin, as in like, if you're wearing a very creamy bronzer and you put this on top, you'll see how thin this texture is and the differentiation between this and how creamy the bronzer is. Like, it'll become kind of obvious in my opinion. It is very long wearing. So going into summer, that is really nice. Now this is a blush that everyone loved. Like, I really enjoy the Water Fresh Tint from Chanel, so I was really excited about this. Um, this is the shade Intense Coral. It's the Le Beige Water Fresh Blush. Um, so here it is. You can see it has all the little pigments and then you break them up and you get this watery blush. For some reason, it just looks kind of choppy on my skin. Maybe it's something I need to just try again. But for some reason, it just was never looking 100%. Part of it might be just because of the texture, because of the other products I was pairing it with. So I'm open to this working. I've heard like some of the shades don't have really any pigment. That's why I got the Intense Coral shade. 
I think I'm gonna give this like one more go, um, maybe, but at this moment, I, I would steer you away from trying it. I think it's kind of overhyped. See how this one goes for now. I am going to go ahead and declutter the Be Perfect, the cheek blush. This is the shade Cherub. It's just like this insane kind of like orange tangerine shade. There are other like tangerine shades that I think work better for my skin tone. This was a little bit too um, tangerine mustard kind of vibe. The formula I thought was really good though. And this is very affordable, like nice heavy glass packaging. Next, let's talk about this rose ink blush. It's it's the shade Anemone. Um, and I just wanted to love this so much. I really did. But the formula is just a little, it was a, it was a little odd for me once it actually went onto uh, the cheeks. I remember it kind of just wanting to pick back up on itself and never giving me the blend that I wanted it to. It's unfortunate. I have found before uh, that rose ink products, some of them are just, there's like one or two things where it's like you almost got there, but it just isn't 100% there. One, I will say I love the packaging. They really managed to make this feel luxe while also making it like recyclable. I think the shade is pretty, but ultimately like it just, it hasn't been it hasn't worked for me and it's kind of sat here. So I think that means it probably needs to go. A product that also I think needs to go is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Blush in the shade Honeysuckle. Now, first of all, I think this kind of formula is going to be, I think it's gonna be one that some people don't like because it's just so dewy. But here's the thing, that to me looks delicious these kind of blackened cherry shades are very, very pretty. This shade Honeysuckle, like as a actual lip product, I would really enjoy. But I don't know if you can see this, like when it blends out, for some reason, it on my skin it reads as patchy or it, it just reads as not really brightening up my skin. There's just something that leaves me feeling like I look tired it just isn't, I just don't think it's necessarily flattering for my skin. This is very emollient, very juicy. Love this shade, just for me it's not working. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. It kind of pains me to do that just because I love these kinds of shades, but on my cheeks, again, just it's not working. It's not the most flattering. Um, I also feel a similar way to the Cheek Freak Blush Balm in Big O from uh, About Face. This shade just just not uh, doing it for me. I think the reason this one is just a touch off is that it's a very kind of red, cool toned blush. And I like more of a red that leans a touch warmer. If you guys do want to see that red blush video, I'll keep this for that. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. Um, I will say I, I'm not opposed to this formula, but it is more silicone heavy. So again, be be aware of that. The thing with silicone in blush formulas is oftentimes it makes the product really easy to apply. If you have dry patches or hair on the face, occasionally I have found that it can sometimes look choppy on the skin. Like sometimes the silicones I feel like don't really know where to go and they'll get caught on the hair and look choppy. Or if you have different texture, like your skin has texture to it, some areas are drier than others. Some You can kind of clearly see the blush, like the way the pigment isn't sticking to some areas and is sticking to others. And that is like a pet peeve of mine. I think sometimes this can do that. However, like pressed in with a finger, you're not going to have that issue as much, I think. If you guys want to see me comparing a bunch of different red blushes, let me know. And I'll pull this back out. Um, usually with my declutter videos, there's like about a month wiggle room before the products actually go out. I typically like take them all out of the house in one fell swoop. I think these blushes can finally go. They're from Winky Lux. I are the Cheeky Rose blushes. They are a really nice formula for sure. There's honestly like, I don't really have any complaints about them. 
they're really pretty like it really keeps the rose look when you apply them and they go on that's again the shade of dodgy and then i also really really love the shade crown so pretty oh just broke a petal after i was just saying how these really keep the shape they in general do last long they're creamy but they're almost kind of like cream to powder i have no real complaints about the formula i just i tend to like to reach for makeup that i feel kind of excited by and these don't necessarily excite me anymore just being honest i think that these could be really fun for someone else in my life to have Speaking of formulas that are like exciting for me, so this is from Make Beauty. It's the heat stroke. Um, I'm pretty sure these are like multi-use kind of stick products. This is the shade Stimulated. This is an absolutely insane shade. Like such a pretty raspberry. It almost likes, or it looks like that shade Funny something. Do you guys know what shade I'm talking about from NARS? Funny face, um, very similar look. These shades though, the unfortunate part of this story is these kinds of shades do not look good on me. They just aren't really flattering. Especially with like my hair color, I just find that it doesn't do much for my skin tone. Basically, it's a cool color, but just not for me. Um, and I want to get ahead of these things. Like, even though I'm really excited by Make Beauty as a whole, I am going to declutter this. I wish I had another shade. I do have the bronze shade, which is beautiful and so balmy and really just a very interesting formula. Like, I think you kind of saw there how it has, like, this really balmy, dewy translucence, but they go onto the skin really easily, too. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and declutter this. Next, I have the Persona Blush Multi-Stick, and this is the shade Teddy. I wish I really had tried this more. I feel like this has been sitting in my collection, and I just, like, have not really given it a go. This is one of those, like, very easy shades. Like, it's just a warm nude shade. This is really going to go with a lot of looks, so if you are a Persona Teddy fan, Leave me a comment down below and fight for this product. Fight for it to stay in my collection. So let me know if you'd like to see uh, me try this out. For now, it's going to stay. Shall we continue on with the Glossier Cloud Paints? So these are, I think a couple of these are from when they first launched. So pretty old. So I think we have to kind of pare down here. I'm definitely going to be keeping this shade, which is Dawn. I love this shade. It is so, so pretty. So this is the shade Dawn. You can see it is a pretty intense um, orange shade. I think it's super pretty. You don't need a lot of this. Even a fraction of this will give you like a, a really pretty effect on the skin. I do think Glossier kind of amped up the pigment with some of the newer um, shades, which I think is good. So this is definitely one that's going to stay. I also quite like the shade Storm. I wish I had reached for it more. It's kind of like a brown purple, which I personally find to be very unique. You can see here, it, it almost reminds me of that Honeysuckle shade just a little bit that we talked about earlier from uh, Tarte. This one, I think I can, I have like a better chance of actually being able to get away with it. I do, however, really like the shade Dusk. Just very wearable. And then finally, we have the shade Haze, which is one of those really pretty kind of out in the cold shades. I don't know what to say. I'm not reaching for it too, too much even though it's very pretty. I think I'm going to keep Storm and Dawn. They're some of the newer formulas that I have and just the shades I think speak to me the most. And then I'm going to declutter Dusk and Hates. And I know I have a couple of friends that use the club paints religiously and they'll definitely enjoy having those. That Dawn shade really stains. <laughs> 
the hands, it just is doing a number on them right now. Next up, let's talk about the, the Say blushes. They're called the Dew Blushes, and I have mine in the shade Poppy and Spicy. Both of these are very, very pretty shades. So here's the shade Poppy. It's a very, very pretty coral shade. What I really like about it is how, like, it's very clearly like a more dewy, fresh color. But because of the texture, you shouldn't anticipate this being too difficult to work with. They just kind of want to sheer out. And then the shade Spicy is certainly a favorite as well. This is one of those typical bronzy blush shades that I've talked about before on my channel. And this one, again, it has this really pretty radiance. It's very spreadable. The Dew Blushes, I think, would work best for someone that wants a decent amount of flush and a nice dew to their skin, but they don't want like insane pigment similar to like the e.l.f. and the Rare Beauty. These actually have a little bit less pigment despite <laughs> what the swatches look like. But yeah, I really, really enjoy these. I'm definitely keeping both. I uh, use and enjoy both. Oh my gosh, like do you see how my hands are just really picking up the pigment at this point? I think let's go ahead and move into one of these like little organizers that I have here. The Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Blush in the shade Jubilee. This is pretty good, but I don't reach for it that much just because of the texture. I do prefer this texture to some of the other Yummy Skin products that I've tried from the line. I think the color is very pretty, super vibrant. This is one of those that I just probably have to pull out and really commit to getting some more use out of. But it's a new enough product that I think there's probably still some general interest, interest from you all. But you let me know. Um, for now, I think I'm going to keep it. Now I have a few Sigma blushes and I have tried a couple and I have enjoyed a couple of these blushes. Um, so I have tried the shade Corderosa right here, which is very, again, like very typical kind of bronzy nude shade right there. Definitely nothing wrong with that, like really easy for every day. I also have the shade Pashmina. I, I really enjoy this shade. Pashmina. And then I have Coral Dawn here. Now, I can't remember if I've tried this one. It's still in its box, so I want to say I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. Um, ironically, I think I would like this shade the most, but I'm going to go ahead and declutter this because, again, has not even been touched. And out of these two, I think Pashmina, Pashmina kind of gets along a little bit better for me, that swatch right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll with it. And then uh, Corderosa can get a new home. I also have a couple of these uh, Say Glow Sculpts. These sit somewhere in between a blush and a bronzer. Or I'm sorry, a blush and a highlight kind of formula. Like this shade, the shade Peach Glow, is incredibly luminous. That that texture actually kind of reminds me, now that I think of it, um, of the texture of the Rose Ink Blush. Like it has this kind of whipped uh, quality to it. So there it is right there. It's very pretty, but it does have quite a shift. Like it's a peach gold kind of blush slash highlight. And then we have this shade. I do have the bronze shade somewhere. I don't know where. Um, but we also have this shade, which is Mauve Glow, and haven't used this one in a while. You do kind of have to like break the seal at the top a little bit. I do like the bronze shade. I wish I had it to swatch for you guys. It's probably kicking around in a makeup bag somewhere, but that is Mauve Glow. My instinct is to keep Mauve Glow and declutter the Peach Glow. Just because I almost see Mauve Glow as being almost like kind of like a chiseling color. 
um, potentially. It reminds me a little bit of the shade Inner Glow from Kira Weiss, which I've used kind of in a similar way. It's, they're very luminous and they have both like pretty strong shifts. Nevertheless, I do think the formula is interesting, um, but I am going to pass along Peach Glow. I just don't see myself really utilizing it, um, but but Mauve Glow, I think that there is some uh, potential here. They do have a concealer that they just came out with. I need to try. It's been getting really nice reviews. We have a couple of the Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blushes. Um, we have the shade Just Peachy. Yeah, similar kind of like texture to the one from Say. I would say this does feel a bit balmier than the one from Say, and this and this formula in general is just, it's it's not quite as pigmented. This, this peach shade is very pretty. Again, you can really wash this out. I kind of like to think of it as like a balm blush. You're not gonna get a ton of pigment and probably these would work best for someone with dry skin or um, mature skin. And then here is the shade Rose Crush. Where do I wanna swatch this? I feel like my hands are getting kind of <laughs> tired out here. That's just peachy. So that's the shade Rose Crush. It is very pretty, but again, they kind of blend out and sheer out really quickly. And there's a bit of like a translucent thing kind of going on with them, which with sometimes is a good thing. And sometimes it can make it a little bit fussy. And occasionally these get fussy. So I'm going to keep this more as a library kind of item. I'm going to declutter the shade Rose Crush and keep the shade just peachy. Uh, just to reference the formula or reference the product in general for you all, but I do find the formula just not to be the easiest to work with. And you know, ironically, this formula from Milani, the Cheek Kiss formula is so similar to the Makeup by Mario that I almost just feel wrong telling anyone really to give the one from Makeup by Mario a chance. Not that it's again a bad product, but these are just so much cheaper. Um, so this is my favorite. This is the shade Coral Crush. Incredibly, incredibly pretty shade. And again, it has that balmy thing going on. It has the translucent thing going on. Um, it's a little bit dewy, but these work easier for me or they're just easier to work with, I mean. Um, and they're just not as fussy as far as the formula goes. This is the shade Nude Kiss. Yeah, these two shades are very similar to the ones that I just showed you um, for Makeup by Mario. I mean, this one's obviously way more coral, but this shade Nude Kiss, also a super, super pretty shade, similar to Rose Crush, so beautiful. Now, Milani's Cream Bronzer, I really liked it at first, but it is kind of slip slidey. Um, it doesn't last super long on the skin, so it is something that I feel like you would have to set. Um, but as far as these, I think they're very pretty. Um, I do have this palette though. Ulta does still have this. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say like, yes, if you see like a single shade you like from the line from Milani, these are really great, but this is a really good bang for your buck. Like this palette, um, the shades are beautiful. Let me give you guys some quick swatches. It, these are very pretty shades. I mean, so similar to a lot of the high-end shades and blushes that we've been talking about. Affordable, I'm pretty sure this is like $14 for three blush colors. And you can kind of mix them together. So, you know, you don't have to pay a lot of money for a good cream blush formula and I've tried so many different cream blush formulas in order to find good ones that are affordable. This is definitely one that's good. So I'm going to keep that. Now, I think there's a chance that the Honest Beauty Coral Peach Blush has been discontinued. I don't want that to be the case, but I think that it might be. If not, I will say this is one of the best cream blushes that I have ever tried because it does have this more stiff pigmented formula. You can actually really control it. You just need like a couple of taps into the palette. It sticks where you put it. It's not overly dewy. It lasts all day and it wants to melt into the skin. 
in a very consistent way. You just don't have to worry about this not mixing well with other products, which again, some of these blushes just, they don't want to do that. So I always try and make sure to let you guys know the ones that will. This was definitely a holy grail blush for me for a very long time. I still think that it's really beautiful. If you can find it, I still recommend it. If you can't, I'm really sorry. But I do think I'm going to pass along the Blush Mellow from JCat. This is nice and it does have this kind of, you see it has this kind of like plushy, putty formula to it, this marshmallow thing. It, I just don't really reach for it anymore for whatever reason, but I just feel like it's not, um, I don't know, it's just not really inspiring me anymore. Yeah, not a bad one, just one that I'm not really reaching for anymore. But the last one in here is this blush from Mob Beauty. It's the shade M74. And I gotta tell you, Mob Beauty packaging, I, I love that it's like reusable, um, but this part does get annoying. Like I find that sometimes they pop out. I really like this. I like the shade quite a bit. I mean, you can see that is a really pretty kind of like mauve bronze shade. Occasionally I have found though, this one not get well with certain foundations that I've been using, um, the more I use it. So that is kind of a bummer. I'm going to keep it for now, but but again, I am wary. Um, I just have to, before it's like fully back in the rotation, I need to make sure that it's actually, you know, it's performing. Uh, let's keep going, shall we, with this other little organizer of blush. I have two more. Milani Cheek Kiss blushes. I will say this shade, absolutely perfection. So pretty. If you love this kind of raspberry color, oh God, that's very pretty. That one's hard to let go of, honestly. Um, and then I also have the shade Merlot Moment, which is again, a very pretty fall shade. Oh, stunning. They're just, you guys, they're so good. So good. No wonder I've kept all of them because like, look at these shades. They're so fantastic. All right, I think I'm going to save them for now just because I have an updated um, affordable makeup starter kit that I'm, I want to come out with. So I'll keep these for now, but then I really need to declutter those. Oh, it looks like I have another one of these Say Glow Sculpts and this is the pink one. Now this one feels way more like a highlight to me. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a highlight. That that ain't a blush, in my opinion. I mean, it's pretty as far as a highlight goes, but yeah, it's not a blush. So I should probably just move this into another uh, area of my collection. I also have another Sigma blush in Nearly Wild, which is, again, still unopened. So I'm going to declutter that. I'm also going to go ahead and declutter these three naming blushes. They're the naming playful cream blushes. I really liked that they had like these primary colors. I liked that you would be able to kind of create new blush shades with them, but these have been discontinued for like at least two years, um, which is unfortunate, but it is just the name of the game. They're um, actually a Korean brand, but I do have some more like cream blushes and liquid cream blushes from um, other K-beauty brands that I'll talk about later in this video, but these do need to go. Speaking of which, these from Lily Bread, these are the Beam Cheek Balms. Uh, first of all, adorable. So, so cute. Um, and these are kind of in, they kind of remind me of the Dior Addict shades. Like this is the shade 01, and it's this kind of more like bright, coral shade. This one's going to be kind of difficult to capture on camera because these shades do have more like white base pigments to them. So sometimes these can like not look quite right on camera. Hopefully I'm able to get like a decent, actually that is a good swatch. My arm was a good way to go with this one. So yeah, it, it's very light, but it's super pretty, um, very consistent formula. And a shade like that is really good as like an overall brightener to a blush look. Um, the shade 02 is a similar thing, except this is a little more lavender. It's definitely a similar shade to Pink Glow from Dior, but again, you can see just a touch more purple to that one. 
good. That one's going to be a little bit harder to see, but I really enjoy both. I think that uh, Lily Bread did a good job with this formula, and I'm excited to see how I can really show off these in some upcoming uh, KBD videos. But as always, please let me know what KBD videos you guys would like to see me come out with because I do have a few in the works and I would love to hear your ideas and like what specific categories of K-beauty you'd like me to talk about. Venturing forth, we have the Undone Beauty Lip to Cheek Palettes. These are very similar to the Milani Cheek Kiss formula. I would say these are just a little bit stiffer. Um, this is the shade Poppy. Very, very pretty shade. And also what I'm noticing too is there's a little bit, there, it's stiffer, but also there's a little bit more resistance in general to them. And I have, I will tell you, I've found that these do last a little bit longer than the ones from Milani, but not enough for me to like only use these and not the Milani. Um, and then this is the shade Rosewood, which I've loved for like years. I was really proud of myself that I found these out or found them on my own and then was able to like recommend them to you all. Uh, and there's the shade Rosewood. Gorgeous shade. I mean, these are staying. I think I have an, a palette in here that I actually included in Best Beauty 2023. So yeah, here it is. It's the Neapolitan. I think this was in Best of Beauty Runner Ups, which if you haven't checked out that video, you definitely should, because there's a lot of beautiful products in that video. Um, but this is the Neapolitan palette. What's beautiful about it is you get a highlight, um, kind of like a luminous blush and then two shades that are um, no shimmer whatsoever. Let me give you some quick swatches. Again, like a stiff but balmy kind of formula. I love this shade. This is like a really pretty kind of like caramel shade. Um, I often use it as like a blush bronzer, um, kind of like all in one. This uh, palette is something I often travel with. The, I will say that shade, the luminous one, is like my least favorite out of the ones that I use, but I actually do get use out of this highlight, and I'm like less and less using highlight, but this one, because it has this kind of balmy translucence, uh, I do find it to be really pretty. So this is also an incredibly affordable, beautiful cream palette, so yeah, it's a good one. Um, highly recommend it. Um, I am, so I am going to keep, I think I'm going to keep all of these. All right, for now I'm going to keep all of these, but I am considering decluttering Poppy just because it's a shade I don't typically reach for, but also like I can't just keep the same blush color over and over again. And then I'll have like nothing in my collection, like nothing else to wear. Uh, here's one of my Kier Weiss uh, blush shades. Um, and this is the shade Inner Glow, I believe. Is this the Inner Glow shade? No, this is, oh, crap. I will leave it up on the screen because it's, I'm blanking in my head right now with it. Um, but it is such a beautiful, beautiful cream. You see how it kind of transforms like in the pan? You're like, hmm, what is that? On the hand and on the skin in general, it, it just comes alive. There's a luminosity without this being like overly pearly. I really, really enjoy them. And I like this shade because it kind of does a beautiful job of like sculpting and highlighting and adding this really lovely definition to the cheeks. And I think if you love luminous products that don't look like straight up shimmer, or I think you might really like this. Great for mature skin. Um, this is the one that I have in like a pan, so that's why it's in, um, like in with my other blushes. I have some other shades, but I think it's in like a big palette that I can't seem to find, but if there's anything you guys need to know about like the Kierweiss formula in general and their blushes, their creams, I think that they're very, very pretty. Um, like the shade Sun Drunk, um, the shade Joy. These are, this is a formula used on my channel for a long time and it certainly has my stamp of approval. I'm going to declutter this uh, cushion blush just cause it's like not even opened yet. So this I think can go, this 3CE Take A Layer blush, I've loved it for a long time but they don't make it anymore and 
for that reason, I'm not using it a lot, even though I really like the formula. So I think it should go. And then we have the Flavetto Albedo is what this brand is called. Um, I don't know a ton about it, but um, I was really interested in trying out this blush shade, which is the shade Toffee. This is their Dew Tint and pretty similar formula to like the Milani to the Undone Beauty, uh, but they just like kind of nailed it with the shade. I mean, look at that. It is gorgeous and it has that beautiful jelly kind of translucence that you know this time of year this would be so pretty for like a bronzed blushing kind of look so I will be keeping it and I would love to dive in a little bit more to this brand I do have a couple of their other products kind of kicking around this is the one I think I've been the most excited about though all right I think we're kind of making progress <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter this Glow Play blush from MAC. It's in the shade uh, Just Peachy. By the way, uh, I went through this entire uh, organizer and uh, organized that one, so feel good about that. It's the shade uh, Just Peachy. It's very pretty. Um, I really like the texture of this. There's just, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm pretty sure they're discontinuing them. I could be wrong about that, but there's also something a little bit milky about this peach um, that I don't love. I don't know. It's enough that sometimes it feels like I can see it on my cheeks. Um, it really just depends. It's so different brand to brand, like how much white base pigment they use. Um, for me, this was not um, my perfect creamy putty blush. So I am going to declutter it. I'm also going to declutter the e.l.f. Uh, Hustle & Glow, like Tangerine Blush. Really got a ton of use out of this for a long time. But there are just others that I like more now because I can get a more like juicy effect. Um, rather than this, it does feel a little bit one-dimensional, even though there is like a golden glimmer to it. Um, it, it it's pretty, and I have loved it for a long time. It's affordable. But again, I'm just going for a little bit of a juicier stained effect, and this kind of formula isn't uh, necessarily going to get me there anymore. So I think it's time to pass it along. Product that will kind of give me that is a Cha Cha Tint. I'm gonna wait to swatch this and probably, like probably till the end, just because it will stain. Um, but just know if you're looking for that, um, you're probably better off going with something like this. And I am keeping it, but I'll just wait till the end to swatch it for you guys. I will also be keeping Nearly Apricot from Rare Beauty. Uh, I just don't like this formula, so this is way more of like a library item. I kind of keep this in case I do like a reviewing every product from Rare Beauty kind of video, which I don't even necessarily think I'll ever do. <laughs> but you guys let me know. Like, is this something you think I even need to be referencing anymore? Does it even deserve a spot in the library? Because I've gotten rid of every other shade. Um, I just think the formula in and of itself, uh, it's just way too slippy on my skin. I think for now I'll keep it for the library, but I think its days are kind of numbered at this point. Might need your help with that one. I, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm asking so many questions in this video. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Now, this is a beautiful blush formula from Half Caked. I have, uh, I've talked about these before. They are the InSync liquid blushes and they're freaking great. Um, so let's see, maybe I'll do my arm. This is the shade New Classic. Such a pretty everyday shade. Just a little bit of a deeper peach. Um, the shade Delicate Drama. I don't really remember this one. Oh, it's a little bit more of like a moldy brown. There it is. I think, I think I'm gonna go ahead and declare that one because I have a few that are definitely like that. So I'm going to put that in the declutter bin and then brown sugar is my favorite. So this one's not getting decluttered, but I typically use it almost as like a liquid bronzer kind of situation, but it's just such a pretty shade so toasty and nice. And then Maybe Baby is one of the only 
like baby pink blushes I will use and it's because it has just a touch of a peach um so I find that it looks really pretty and soft on the skin but you guys these blushes from NSYNC or from Half Cakes the NSYNC blushes they are so beautiful they blend in such an easy way they're easier to control i think than other liquid blush counterparts and if you want something with like medium pigmentation rather than like really really intense pigmentation um i think that these are a good way to go i almost feel like they kind of blur the skin and i've never understood how but it is something that i've noticed as i've continued to use them they just make sometimes my makeup like melt everything melts back into each other they're just one of those makeup products that they're just so easy and they're affordable that it becomes kind of a no-brainer kind of situation so keeping these three decluttered one i have this kaja juicy or i'm sorry it's called saucy ose um it's their cushion blush and you can see here that it's a bit clunky the product gets loaded on there and then you can stamp it on but come on. it's kind of all dried out already i feel like this has just got to go kaja i think just came out with new cream blushes though that i am very very excited they look really pretty all right have we gone far enough in the video to start talking about the rare beauty liquid blushes i feel like we have i've loved these since the initial launch i think they're great and I probably do not, uh, I probably don't need all of these. So let's go ahead, do some swatches and get some out of here. First up, I have the shade Love. This one is certainly staying. It is probably my most used. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. Very similar to Bronze Bombshell though from e.l.f. You guys, I don't even see like a huge difference between this formula and the one from e.l.f. I think... The Rare Beauty is a little bit more of like a blurring, like just a touch more blurring maybe than the e.l.f., but not super noticeable. I think both are great. Um, this is the shade Hope. Hope is nice, but kind of boring. Just a little boring. There's nothing wrong with boring, though. I have two. Why do I have two shades of love? All right. I think I'm going to declutter one of these. I don't know how I got two. Shade Joy is absolutely a favorite. This is their dewy formula. So this one has just a little bit more juiciness to it, which I do appreciate. I'm going to keep Joy. I think I'm going to declutter Encourage. No. All right. I just got to swatch both. I have the shade Worthy. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use that one. I think I might declutter that one. I have Worthy. And then this is Encourage. See, Encourage is very cool toned. I feel like Worthy is way too close to love for me to like keep both. So I think I am going to declutter Worthy. Next we have the shade. Uh, these two shades are, are probably gonna stain. So wish me luck here. This is the shade um, Grateful, this bright, bright red there it is i'm going to keep that especially if i do a red blush video which again y'all let me know if you want to see that and then i have the shade lucky and i think i'm going to go ahead and declare the shade lucky because i'm just not reaching for it it is a beautiful kind of raspberry shade but again it just it is what it is so those are all the ones i have Decluttering Lucky, and I think I'm going to keep Hope, which is right here, and then I'm going to declutter Encourage, which is down here. There we go. There they all are. So this Hourglass Vanish Stick Blush, I thought I really liked it, but then it started to mess with my makeup a little bit, and I haven't used it since. So... Let me know. I'm going to keep it for now, but please let me know if you've had issues with this, like the silicone in this messing with your makeup. Um, this is the shade Sacred. It's a beautiful shade, really even pigmentation, but again, 
a little bit of silicone to this and my skin, you know, it sometimes just doesn't like it. So I would love to hear your thoughts if you have had like what your experience has been like with this one. Now I have two NARS uh, After Glow Liquid Blushes. And the big irony of this uh, product is that I have not liked these at all. Um, this is the shade Orgasm. But the other day, so the other day I saw um, this woman put it on and um, it was just like in a video and it looks so good on her. And I was like, should I try these again? Because I tried them a few times and had like very poor luck with them. I'm gonna declutter Orgasm. It's just not really my kind of shade anyway. But maybe I'll give Dolce Vita another chance. Uh, the shade is like so, so pretty. But the thing is, is you can even see it here, like with a gel formula, because there's this translucence to them, like, yeah, you can see like when it shears out almost too readily, that can look patchy sometimes on me. Yeah, I'm gonna keep uh, Dolce Vita for now, then just as like a reference product, but yeah, I just, I don't know. Personally, I think they're kind of overrated. This is gonna bug me. <laughs> I have the Patrick Ta She's the Moment um, cream blush that I recently picked up. It's this absolutely perfect tangerine, but for some reason I can't find my other one which is, do we know her? So this one has this beautiful cream blush on the top. It's just the most perfect tangerine. Love tangerine shades. And then here's the powder. Swatch that next to it for you guys. Sorry, it's gonna look a little bit odd because my fingers have, are just a little bit wet at this point. Um, but there it is. I gotta remember to pull this one out and not let it get kind of lost in all of the other products that I have going on. This is a, one of uh, Patrick Cha's like newer shades. Really nice for this time of year for sure. Oh, it looks like I had the shade Mood from Merit as well. This is one of the old um, flush bombs with the old packaging, um, but I don't reach for this shade a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. It's just not a shade that I think looks like the absolute best on me. This shade, however, Dawn Patrol from Cali Ray, this is a shade that I do think looks really nice. It's very similar to like these shades we've been talking about. Um, kind of like Spicy from Say in the Dew Blush, except this is a little bit more of like a gel kind of serum texture really unique. Um, I want to get more use out of this. You can probably tell like it leaves a stain. Like you see that? <laughs> My hand is stained <laughs> as if every piece of this arm has not been stained already, but I should probably pull this back out and uh, get using it again because I really loved it when I first had it. I also have one more shade of the Half Caked uh, in sync blush and this is no strings attached this is another favorite so i am going to keep it but look at that just like liquid bronze deliciousness very pretty um it looks quite pigmented there but i usually sheer it out kind of all over the face and it looks great i think it's finally time to say goodbye to these flower beauty uh blush balms because they're kind of like puffed up you see that like, and they're not supposed to be like that. So I think they might be bad. It's no fault of their own. It's just, it's, they're, it's time to go. Next, I have the Amicole um, Desert Date Cream Multi-Stick. Now, this shade is the shade Dune, which, do you guys like Dune? I love Dune. I'm really pumped about the new movie. Really enjoyed it. Um, this shade is great. Really, really enjoy this shade. But it's kind of a similar thing to the Hourglass blush. Like occasionally I'll just find that it's not, it, it's not working well with the other products that I have going on. I think I'm gonna declutter this one. Just kind of a bummer, but I think it has to be done. Um, really like the lip oils from Amicole though. I'm also going to declutter the LA Girl Soft Matte Cream Blush in Blissful. It's a very pretty shade. There it is right there really pretty by most accounts, but it has quite a fruity smell. 
which is kind of odd. Um, it's not something I really like to have on my face. Um, it's not like a complete deal breaker, but when you have so much blush, I think it's enough of a deal breaker. <laughs> Next, we have the Smashbox Halo Sheer to Stay Color Tints. These are such an underrated product. Um, this is the shade Blush. Really pretty kind of raspberry shade. Um, I have the shade Mai Tai, which is a personal favorite of mine. Um, you can see they that is more of more accurate to the texture. They're kind of like a creamy stain, um, which I have found to be really unique. Um, they last really well on the skin. They're just very easy to work with. They give a very juicy look while, again, being easy enough to work with, um, unlike some stains that can be, again, just takes a bit to get them to blend on this onto the skin. These do a really good job of blending really easily, offering like some really vibrant, pretty color, and they last super well. So as far as like liquid blushes in the mid range, like I think that these are such an underrated, overlooked formula. I mean, I bought three because um, I really enjoyed them. But that being said, I do find myself reaching the most for Mai Tai and Terracotta. So I might declutter the shade blush. I mean, it's such a pretty shade, but hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think I'll keep it for now. It's nice for spring. I do have one of the Can Make blushes that I could have sworn I decluttered. Um, this is the shade 05. It's kind of like this peachy shade. I'm pretty sure I decluttered. Like, how, how is this in here? Um, this shade isn't my favorite, um, so I am going to go ahead and declutter it. I also have a couple of the Jouer Blush and Bloom duos, which are so good. I don't know why more people don't talk about them. Um, this one is Be Loud, which is um, this more kind of mauve shade. And then with it, you have this clear balmy uh, highlight. So really like nice kind of every day, but I'm not using it. So I'm going to declutter it, but I am going to keep this one, which is the shades Promise Me. Beautiful. The, this formula that Joy has come out with is very, very smooth and pretty. And then uh, Celebrate Me, which is also on here. So like these are very great like everyday shades. You know, the longer I think about it, I don't even, I'm gonna declutter the Hourglass Vanish Stick. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna do it because after swatching these and remembering like how even and easy to work with these are, like I would just so much rather work with this formula and enjoy it rather than try to force myself to like the Hourglass because I, I fell out of love with it, unfortunately. So this is the Celebrate Duo, and then I'm going to declutter the um, Emile uh, Duo. Next up, we have the Colfi Mendy Moment Blush. I really gotta pull this back up. Um, this is the shade Sandalwood Swirls. I really enjoyed this when I first got it, and then it has just been sitting. Oh God, I... <laughs> took out a lot. Such a unique shade. Like there's a lot of layers to this one. That's pretty well. Um, I'm going to keep it for now. No like real issues to report. Uh, just one of those products that like I really loved it when I first got it and then uh, as makeup sometimes does it just gets lost. Now I'm not going to stick here for too long but I do have a few of the Jones Road Miracle Balms. I have let's see. Yeah, I have a few. I have the Lip and Cheek Stick in English Rose, um, which is different than the Miracle Balm, um, but I have it right here. Going to keep this because I think it's good to have in reference to these. But I do have an upcoming dedicated review on the Miracle Balms coming. Um, so make sure that you're subscribed because I'm going to be giving you guys that very soon. I have found a new kind of appreciation for them and I think they're very unique. So I 
thought that I would just kind of do like a dedicated review on them. I brought um, in specific the shade of Pinky Bronze, this little mini with me on my trip to Iceland. And this actually kind of um, inspired the revisitation of this product. Um, I also have this new shade, the shade Cocoa Bronze, which I am excited to try it out. It's so delicious. But yeah, so just keep in mind that that video is coming. Make sure you're subscribed for it if you'd like to see it. But um, for that video in specific, I need these. I need haul. Now, Half Caked also has their candy paints, which I also think are really good, but some of them have been discontinued. Um, so the shade Disco Lemonade has been discontinued. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. I uh, think I'm going to go ahead and keep the shade Millions of Peaches because I do really enjoy this one. Really great shade. God, that is pretty. So that one is going to stay. I have the shade uh, Tragic Kingdom, which has not even been touched. So that can be decluttered. And then I'm gonna keep the shade You're So Last Summer, which is kind of like basically a bronzer. Great, like even pigmentation applies really well. Um, I think Half Cakes in general is just like a very underrated brand. This is a product that I will keep for a red blush video, but if that video does not happen, then it's going because I don't really like this formula from Rem. Uh, this is the shade uh, Leading Lady. Oh, that's like, it's red, but it's kind of just orange. Yeah, um, it's pretty much just orange. I'm gonna declutter this. I just, for some reason it doesn't, it's never like blended perfectly on me and has kind of caused more distress than <laughs> it needs to. Oh, I have another Miracle Balm in Pinky Bronze. I think I have two. So I think I'm gonna declare one, um, but that shade is really, really pretty. I also have some e.l.f. putty blushes. I have two of the original and then I have the Luminous. The Luminous in Maui is my favorite as far as the Luminous colors go because I have, I bought a couple, I think. Did I? Very pretty, super soft, just really nice kind of everyday makeup. I wish the pearls were just a little bit finer, just a touch finer, but I honestly don't notice it too much on the cheeks. Um, and then I have the shade Fiji, I believe. Pretty typical kind of putty formula. And it goes down to a powder once it's on the skin. And then I have the shade Bali, which is more of that bronzy blush, like warm bronze kind of shade. Which I feel like that would be a good video too, to do the blush bronze combo shade roundup. But uh, all of these are staying. I really do enjoy them. And the, the e.l.f. putty blushes in general are good for more long wear makeup I've found. Make sure you're really pressing them in. I don't think they're the best to like be buffed into the skin necessarily. But other than that, I think that they're really good. I also have a bunch of the uh, Khaki and Finding for Nan uh, blushes that she's released with them. These, I think, are from the Summer Abroad collection and these are the Apri Ski collection. So I know I definitely, like my most favorite shade out of all of them is the shade Macchiato. This is a really, really pretty, like that kind of bronzed blush shade that I've talked about before. So I know I want to keep that one. And I think I'm also going to keep the shade uh, Aperitif, which is a very, very pretty shade. Just, a very very high pigment red coral these have like a little bit more pigment than some of the other shades like the shade latte which is i believe the lightest saturation of beige that she's come out with but it's a very very pretty shade I did tweak the formula when they came out with the apri uh ski collection what was my favorite trying to think I think I was it high noon hmm. no you can even see like in the finger how these have a little bit more resistance comparatively to the other shades and they're not as dewy I think it was dusk was it dusk and did I just use I think it was the shade dusk 
I'm gonna go ahead and keep the shade Dusk, Aperitif, and uh, Macchiato um, because these are the three favorites that I have. And then I'm going to um, declutter the rest. Not, not because they're not beautiful, they're clearly pretty, um, but they were limited edition, unfortunately. And I would like some other people to get some use out of them. Honestly, I kind of want to keep Latte, but again, now I picked up a couple of these Morphe 2 like stacker kind of things. It has like a pretty topper, um, a powder blush, and then a cream. And what's at the bottom? Oh, it's like a highlight. I just, I have not really, I mean that one, this one is, I think this is a lip. Hmm. Yeah, that's the cream, that's the blush. I think this is the lip. <laughs> so why is this being included in this video? Who knows? I think I've been kind of keeping these stackers in the wrong drawer. So I'm gonna kind of set these aside. I don't think they are even meant to be in this video. I felt like I knew I was missing one of Kathy's blushes, the shade Spritz. This was another favorite. It's pretty similar to Aperitif though. So I feel like I don't need both. Um, but that's just a, a reference for you guys. I have a couple of these Baby Got blushes from Essence, and I think it's time to at least declutter one. I think the formula is really good though. So that is, they do have a really fruity smell though, which I just kind of very strange to me. That's Rosé all day right there. And then I have the shade Peaches and Cream. Honestly, both are really pretty, but I think I'm gonna keep rose all day and declutter peaches and cream. It's just a really nice, like, quick blush formula. Affordable, I think these are like $4 or something. Really hard to find a good formula at this price. Speaking of affordable, I don't even know if I've used this blush balm from Revolution. Like, I, I just gotta use it. Um, This is the shade Dolly Rose. And it's a nice shade. I just don't know why I haven't gotten around to using it. So I am going to keep that one for now. How do I have another can make blush? Is this the shade that I thought was like the candy apple red? Because now I'm not positive. Hmm. Well, either way, I have to keep it for the red blush video that I don't even know if anyone wants. Shall we talk about the Color Nectar Pigment Balms from M Cosmetics? Now... These, I have a couple of shades I really enjoy. This shade, Autumn Sky, is very, very pretty. Really, just very, very nice color. M Cosmetics does, I think, always has like a unique take on their shade selection. I think Forbidden Fruit, though, I might like even more. Yeah, <laughs> I love that even more. It's so good. Butter Autumn Sky. Even though it's nice, I, I like Forbidden Fruit even more. I also love Sunset Sky. Just a beautiful coral shade. So freaking fresh. But you know what? Honestly, my sister loves this one and I don't think she's had it in her, in her collection for a while. So I think I am gonna declutter it and give it to her. And then lastly, we have the shade Little Lilac, which I barely ever use like so rarely um so i'm just oh god if i don't drop it um i'm just gonna keep forbidden fruit and declutter the rest the serum texture is very interesting you can see it's very like translucent and there's like a nice kind of uh like dewiness and a freshness to them they're almost like blush oils rather than a serum i would say I have used the shade Sunset Sky, my sister has like for so long, like right on the tops of the cheekbones and it just adds this really pretty dewy but sunburnt effect. It's just been one that I've loved for a long time. I think you just have to be cognizant like tapping it onto the skin rather than like really buffing it in and you'll get like a nice effect. But I understand if people don't even wanna have to worry about that. Now, I have a few Asian Beauty uh, cream blushes. Yeah, here's my entire uh, collection that I have going. 
I don't want to stay here for too long just because I have a bunch of um, like I'm brainstorming K-beauty videos upcoming so I'll probably get into these a little more. I have this one from Nakair which is Jonna Peach. This one is way more of this kind of whipped texture if you like more of a fluffy kind of blush. Now this one from Amuse was a huge disappointment for me. First of all like this applicator is bizarre. It's I think it's supposed to be a star but it <laughs> just looks jagged. And this is the shade Shimmer Marmalade. Um, and again, it's like kind of like a beigey shimmer. It's quite awkward, on, in my opinion. I have the shade Vienna Rose from 3CE. This is the velvet uh, blusher from 3CE. And the way like these go onto the doe foot is very awkward in my opinion, but it is a similar formula to the Nicare, that more like kind of fluffy texture. The Bare Cheek from I'm Mimi. This is the shade, I'm not even sure what shade this is. I think it's the shade three. And this one just, it's so little pigment and it also has a menthol-y smell. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter that one. This is the About Tone a lavender blush in the shade four and this one is also incredibly sheer you know a lot of um a lot of specifically k-beauty products are tend to be on the more sheer side which is not necessarily a bad thing it's like not my favorite thing um but the beeve blush hyperfit color serum is not shy of the pigment and this is definitely like my favorite liquid blush um, I've tried from uh, K-Beauty in the K-Beauty realm in a while. It's very similar to the M Cosmetics, but I personally find it way easier to work with than the other ones that we've been talking about. The pigment's a little bit more saturated. It's smoother, like it feels more even, and it's going to work for more people rather than just people with very pale skin. And again, I do get a lot of comments saying, well, this is the K-Beauty aesthetic, like low pigment products, that is typically what is made. Uh, listen, I know that, I know that, and there's totally nothing wrong with that, but I'm just talking from my personal perspective and uh, preference. Like I want a little bit more pigment typically, um, and the Feeve does give me that. For now, I'm going to keep these potentially for an upcoming video, um, but you guys really gotta let me know um, how you see these being incorporated into a video. Maybe like a best and worst K-beauty blush video. So they're all staying, but this is the one that I can, like a top recommendation as far as K-beauty blushers go. So, so pretty. Great for like a dewy cheek effect. I'm going to be decluttering the shade Crush from Daniel Sandler. It's very, very pretty, but it stains, which is why I'm not even gonna swatch it for you guys. I'm always afraid to use it because it's so liquidy and it stains so easily. So I'm going to declare that one, but I will give you guys a swatch of the shade Caress, which I think is very pretty. It's a very basic shade, but there's nothing wrong with being basic. Great, like even pigmentation. There's just, there's like a general freshness to the, to the Daniel Sandler uh, watercolor blushes. They've been used by makeup artists for like years. They were one of the first out there. You could use them with like a blush brush. You could use it with um, like an airbrush makeup. If you're like an OG liquid blush wearer, I'm sure that you are familiar with these, but I think they're very pretty. I am going to go ahead and declutter the Sweet Cheeks blush from NYX because I just do not reach for it. I, I, I just don't. It has this fluffy formula that isn't bad, but I've never been like overwhelmingly in love with it, I think. Um, I have a couple of stick blushes here that I need to figure out what I'm doing with. Now, this one from Pat McGrath is Peach Lotus. I just need to, I just need to give this a go. It's just been sitting here. I, I don't even know how, because I was really excited when I got it in the mail just a really kind of juicy pink shade. So keeping this one for now. Um, I also have the shade Petal from Westman Atelier, which is one of these very classic like mauve rose shades. 
Estimate Atelier blush is very pretty, but sometimes it does the thing that the Hourglass does. And I've realized it again as I've continued to use it that it can sometimes pick up the blush or, you know, pick back up on itself. I'm keeping it for now because it's been way more consistent than the Hourglass one has, but I am sometimes side-eyeing it and being suspicious. Um, and then this is the shade Earthy Pink, Earthly Pink from Makeup by Mario. And I think that this formula is way better than the blush veils from Makeup by Mario. I think that the stick blushes are just, have way more grip to them, last longer, more even pigmentation. They're just in general better. So that one is staying. I think I'm gonna declutter the puff paint in, um, it's the Serum Blush from Natasha Denona. This is like the beigey shade. I'm not sure what, it, what the color is, but I, so often do not wear it. It's kind of like this yellow beige that I'm just not reaching for. Um, and then I have the Nude Kiss in 110 from Milani. This is, ironically, it's a, I feel like it's a pretty similar shade um, to the one we just talked about with maybe just a touch more warmth. It's not bad. Um, I could keep it as a reference product, but if I'm being honest, I just so rarely use it that I think I'm just gonna finally declutter it. Speaking of liquid blush, this one from 3CE is the sheer liquid. Um, and somehow it got, uh, I didn't swatch it in that last little roundup I did. Um, this is the shade Side Piece. Really pretty, very sheer. <laughs> you know, so sheer that, again, I think some of you will be wanting more, but alas, we'll just have to see how these but alas, we'll see if uh, this makes an appearance in an upcoming uh, K-Beauty video, at least for now. I also have this Skin Food Fresh Fruit Lip and Cheek. This one is in the shade number three. I'm pretty sure this has been discontinued, but if I can find it, I'll leave it below. But I think it's discontinued, but it is really, really good. Um, Like beautiful. If you're into like these orangey coral shades, they just got like... There's three of them packed right in here. So compact, um, beautiful. Just, I remember finding this. It was like a little hidden gem. I was so happy to find for you guys. But yeah, I don't know. It says it's expired. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it, which is kind of a bummer. But yeah, it, I've had it for a really long time. The Winky Lux Cheeky Rose Liquid Blush. This is the shade hmm, Noble. This is like their new liquid blush. I much prefer the liquid blushes that they just came out with. This kind of like really pigmented but thin watercolor formula. I prefer this to the bronzer. The bronzer was kind of odd, but the thing is, is like, I'm just not reaching for this shade, unfortunately. Um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it, which is kind of a bummer um, because I really, really like the formula. We also have the Urban Decay Hydro Hydromaniac Glow blush glow hydrator which i love i love it so much but another one of those i think discontinued products see this is what i am hoping for when i deal with a really thin kind of serum texture is you know it does sheer out but it remains juicy and the color still looks consistent enough some brands don't do the consistency right even with like these thinner textures this lasts really well on the skin um really pretty for just like that jelly pinched cheek look but this color is also nice the shade obsessed i like this for like that coral pop very pretty discontinued but i'm gonna keep it and like get a little bit more use out of it just because like i feel like i found it right when it was being discontinued um i'll try and find a link to it if i can uh and leave it down below and I also have my Benetints as well. Um, I have the shade Love Tint, which is a bright, bright red. Bright, bright red. And this one stains. So I'm going to go ahead and immediately take off that swatch. Um, because you can see how even for two seconds it stained the hand so fast. I also have the shade Benetint. I usually do keep um, my stains with 
my other blushes because that's typically how I use these. Um, I'll put it on the lips too, but it's more so as like a I might as well kind of thing. Um, and then I also have the shade Cha Cha Tin, which Cha Cha Tin is just like my perfect tangerine blush. And I always talk about it uh, in the summer because it's just like, it's perfect. It gives me that really, just that really pretty tangerine flush that feels really youthful. It's kind of, it lasts really well and it just feels like a no fuss, always going to brighten up the skin and look really fresh. I love, uh, I really love all these. I think that they're a great um, option. And you do have a choice. Like the Cha Cha Tint has a little bit of a um, creamier texture, which I think is nice. I've loved Benetint though for like forever. I think Love Tint is the one I use the least amount, but I talk about these enough, like pretty often, that I think having this as a reference is a good idea. So I'm gonna keep those three for now. Also have a couple of the Ritual Defeat Color Nectar Pigment Balms here. So I have the shade Bee Sting, which is my personal favorite, um, right there. And I also have the shade Snapdragon, which, which is a really pretty orange shade. Now these I think, and I feel this way about a lot of Ritual Defeat products, I think that they're pretty underrated. Um, they are one of those more juicy emollient balm products, but they go on way more similar to like a lip and cheek kind of stain. And I've just found as I've continued to wear them that it almost, especially the shade Bee Sting, it just leaves this little kiss of blushing, kind of like coy, good skin kind of look. And these are certainly staying in my collection. All right, everyone. So these are all of the blushes that I'm going to declutter. I feel so good about this. This box is like all the way full. These are all of the cream blushes that I'm going to be keeping. But in general, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I will leave every blush I talked about in today's video down below for you guys. And in general, if you're excited about the clutters, I have a lot more coming, so make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in my next one.